So uh, I'm Sadie Hobson from We Work Well and bringing you the next episode in our vlog series talking about how people are coping during lockdown and some different ideas and strategies that you can use. Joined today by two very special guests, um, one of which I've known for a very long time, an old school <laughs> friend. The other I've just found out I've actually met before as well. Um, so firstly, just to kick things off, uh, if you take the time to just introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, what you guys do and why you do it, that would be a fantastic start. Yeah, should I start? Yeah. My name um, Imogen Tinkler, married to Duncan Tinkler. Yeah. And we, are, we have a company called Bangers and Balls, which is all about um, traceable food so knowing where it comes from seasonal produce that's affordable and also sustainable mm -hmm. and I'll let Duncan talk um, so yeah we do um, before the uh, lockdown we were we did um, supper clubs we did um, exper food experience days so, um, fishing or going to farms and then cooking on, out on the beach and things like that um, and now we're doing virtual supper clubs <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Yeah, which is quite good. And um, yeah, so we, as Imogen said, we it's all about um, local and seasonal food, um, traceability, so we know where the food comes from, so mm -hmm. we can um, understand whether it's from like a big factory farm and not very good for the environment or the animal welfare and things like that. So we try to steer clear of that and we try and um, do things which have, are positive for yeah. both yeah. health, environment and everything excellent and if you have a guest we're a couple yeah. <laughs> we're, we're married and we have a tiny toddler who's two and we live by the seaside down in whitstable in kent which we love but we're both originally from um essex so yeah excellent whitstable's beautiful isn't it it's, it's a lovely part of the country you're very it's lucky lovely. to live there it feels really it's the strap line is whitstable is good for the soul and it's wow the soul. that's a yeah. cool strap line <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's brilliant and what a place to be in lockdown right because you're, you're right on the beach aren't you yeah we're walking distance from the beach so that's really nice we get to see the sea every day oh yeah. amazing definitely definitely good for the soul so people who might have seen some of the other videos might be thinking you know what's how does this relate to people's mental health and well-being? How does this relate to, to coping strategies? Um, and I think it's a really, really interesting way to start to explore the subjects of our well-being and how different things can contribute to us feeling good about ourselves, um, and good about what we're doing, good about what we're eating. So if you can sort of talk us through your experience currently, personally, during lockdown and how you're finding it, basically. I think a lot of people are interested to find out how other people are coping during this quite surreal time. So, how are you getting on? Do you want to do that? Yeah, our lockdown has been a very different experience for us in some ways. I think it's and, quite unique. Yeah, really unique <laughs> and then the same as others in some ways. Um, we unfortunately we had a little girl and she called B and she was born in January mm -hmm. and she came early, 33 weeks, and she was three pounds four when she oh. was born. So really tiny, tiny. perfect, absolutely perfectly mm. formed, no problems, just really small. And we were in hospital with her for five weeks. So we've been on lockdown for ages wow. because we couldn't have, um, no one can visit with colds or, you know, and we had to keep her really safe and we couldn't take her to the shops. I didn't realise that with premature babies that you can't go to the supermarket or to the pub or just, you know, normal like things. Stuff you do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Lockdown. And then unfortunately on the 16th, so I was thinking about what to dress her in for St. Patrick's Day. My parents have been Irish yeah. and she just stopped breathing, which was a massive shock. Duncan was actually on the radio doing his foodie radio show. And um, they thought I was phoning in for that. And they just had the police then took the phone from me as I was trying to tell him. But um, B was helicoptered to King's and we were there for a week, which was actually like, it was crazy because coronavirus was starting. Lockdown was just starting. But we were there when the pub started to shut and there was no one at all in the hospital. It was, all, it was yeah, empty. King, there was just one police officer upstairs on the whole, like, hmm. for all of it. It was like a horror film. It really was. That sound absolutely surreal. Just yeah. to be that it was, empty. It happened quite. It happened quite, kind of suddenly, but gradually at the same time. So yeah. when we first got there, there was kind of talks. Oh, there might be some kind of lockdown. Within about two days, lockdown was going to happen next week, and um, you weren't allowed to go to hospitals unless you really needed to. So, like at six o'clock in the evening, um, when it's normally very busy in hospital, yeah. it was completely empty deserted like a tumble a ghost up. town jeez yeah. um and people were sleeping in their cars as well because you weren't allowed 
to stay at Ronald McDonald's houses and things like that because lockdown had stopped. We were really lucky. We were one of the last ones to get a room. Right. But um, so lucky. But, you know, but so that, our experience has been very different because we then lost, sadly, lost B, um, which was hard. And we've had a funeral for her in lockdown as well. But it's really hard because people expect you then to be not doing anything or f like even i've got a bit of lipstick on today because it makes me feel good and we didn't well that we didn't want to but we love what we do from bangers and balls and we set it up because of our mental health in the first place mm -hmm. we set it up like duncan hated what he did mm -hmm. and we picked up and moved to the sea because we wanted to change it and we started bangers and balls and part of it was originally it sounds so was duncan rolling the balls because <laughs> it was something really easy to really? do well, I had been yeah. um, doing mindfulness as okay. part of because I had, had depression before, so I'd been to um, CB, CBT, CBT, CBT. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so part of mindfulness was on it, and they, he said that if I had a task, a very easy task to do with my hands, mm -hmm. that would really help with mindfulness, and I found um, rolling meatballs was the perfect thing to do, I could, and I put an audio book on or something as well, yeah. so uh, I got. I mean, now if I make a certain meatball, I suddenly get flashbacks to the book that I was reading, I was listening to at the time. Wow! Um, so I can actually, if I'm doing a lot, like a fifty meatballs or something now, I don't need the audio book. I can Sherlock Holmes go through my head. In order. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that amazing? The way that the mind works and the senses work—that's just so powerful, isn't it? The association from it. So, mm. so you got to eat a lot of meat meatballs during this time, clearly. <laughs> I'm vegan balls. When she's doing her stud homework, I'll be like, listen to an audio book and get rolling in the family business. <laughs> yeah. the exams, as long as she's rolling meatballs while she's doing it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and we, knew we'd, we knew we'd set the business up because of that. That's where bangers and balls came from. It was, it was literally, it's a, for mindfulness the dog could roll the balls and I thought oh we might as well sell them mm. and we attached a business to it and made it round um seasonal so in lockdown we wanted to do something we'd had lots of ideas before but always a bit scared to um, do anything I just wanted to go back a bit um so when we were going through the thing with B um from the beginning from the minute she was born to the, uh, the minute that she died basically food to me was it's always been an important part of my life and especially since having a um a food business um <laughs> so it kind of was highlighted to me things like so we had as soon as um b was born a friend of ours would deliver packages of food to the front door mm -hmm. and when we got home we could just microwave and it was beautiful home cooked and it was winter so there's things like stews and things like that so it's really Comfort good food, yeah yeah exactly and then um i can just remember like sometimes we'd be in the hospital for hours on end and all you would have is the free cakes and biscuits that they had and we didn't have time to even go to the cafe cafeteria yeah. but you when you're that hungry but you don't realize it because you're preoccupied and you just have that one biscuit you can feel the energy that it gives you like, and you can actually it's almost like watching bear grills or something you know when they have that one bit of food and then that gives them the energy to go yeah suddenly they're sprinting up the mountain <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and then um so then also when we were at um uh, the hospital in london there was a a um pub that i had actually met the head chef from and he was all about similar ethos to us the seasonal mm -hmm. food and uh, minimal waste and trying to make meat go further and things like that and so I'd always wanted to go there and it just happened to be around the corner from the, the um, hospital, <laughs> hospital. And um, so it was like, we had some really good food there. So it was actually, that was a really nice moment mm -hmm. in this kind of um, horrible time that we're going through. Um, and it kind of highlighted to me um, various things about how food obviously actually is fuel for you, but also it's something which can give you pleasure and um, something that, and give you comfort as you mm -hmm. mentioned as well and um, so this is all going through my head gradually as we're going through this process so um after you know when after b died and we got home and lockdown was in and all that kind of stuff i thought i felt very much like um my world had fallen apart uh, falling apart around me and actually it was literally happening 
which you, it's quite a cliche, I think, of people saying, oh, my world's falling apart when something like that happens. Mm. It's not a cliche that it actually does happen. And that was what was going on. And so um, I knew straight away that um, we couldn't just do, it would be very easy for us to do nothing. We would have, you know, spend lockdown just sat in our pajamas watching films on Netflix and you know what not. But um, I knew that wasn't going to be good for either of us, and certainly not for Xanthi either, our other daughter. Um, she's, although she's, yeah, she's two. I mean, like, she's a bit aware of what's been going on, but not really. And she doesn't. She kind of thinks that we're on lockdown because of me. <laughs> yeah, she does. That's. <laughs> she thinks it's all that all this has happened because baby B, and that's why we're on lockdown. And oh, bless her heart. That, thing that everything stopped hasn't it everything you go to we would have our routine of going to forest school and being outside and seeing people and just all of that's gone and I think when your routine's pulled from you it's really hard to have any sense of normality mm -hmm. and that's when we thought okay we're going to use this time to do something sometimes I see like people have written a book already and I'm like wow or they've you know like Captain Tom what he's done you think is amazing oh, and I was, don't. it's incredible that, it's just you see and we're like then you feel a bit overwhelmed don't you You're like oh god I haven't done that I haven't and I thought how can we do something that makes a change for us and for others as well because that's what makes me accountable if I'm just doing it for myself I can be a bit lazy if I'm doing <laughs> I'm like, oh, and to be honest <laughs> yeah, exactly. whereas if I'm doing it for Duncan and Xanthi I was like okay that makes me a bit more but then if I put myself out there and said I'm doing it I'm like oh yeah I have to I have to do it so we thought that's when we thought about with lockdown we've actually been wanting to do our garden for ages forever for, well this time last year we were supposed to do it and um, because you, you really have to do it in the spring right so um we thought we, but we didn't get around to doing it for one reason or another we were scared yeah. let's be honest about that we were scared because we knew we wanted it was a grass like a postage stamp <laughs> we're the only people to leave london have a smaller garden and we've got you really <laughs> big garden in London, like a long garden in central yeah. London I wow. thought, all I cared about even at that age was the garden because I wanted somewhere to hang my washing out to dry I don't know what was going on in my head <laughs> but that was because I'd lived in a student you know house yeah. and everything you know, nothing ever smelt fresh you know like your clothes so all I wanted was somewhere to hang my clothes outside so they didn't so but here we've got a small garden we want to move but we've got this small garden and we've always said oh we won't do it because the garden's too small or we got scared because we didn't know how to do it and that real sense of god we have to do everything at once and then one of our friends went okay i'm going to help you this i'm going to help you but if you don't do it i'm not going to help you we were like okay so wow. he literally <laughs> told us to come to his and he was going to leave it outside and he left cardboard for us he's like put cardboard over your whole garden we were like okay and then he said come back and you can dig for manure like not manure um for um, compost there's a big compost heap don't, obviously no contact you know we, so we dug that he's like put that on top of your compost now on top of your cardboard, of your cardboard. cardboard yeah i'm envisaging yeah. a layer yeah yeah we did that we've got a time lapse video of it and then he said to us now choose your plants and plant them and we went oh and then all of a sudden it was done but when we were sat there looking at it yeah. we just didn't know where to start and to think about where the paths went but it gave us this huge focus and I was finding especially in lockdown hard to get up because normally if I find it hard to get up I feel a bit low um because I post I sound like I'm, we, I had prenatal depression and postnatal depression with Xanthi and the best thing I found for me was just to get up get us dressed and get out of the house and we are a member of the local like zoo and of local wildlife parks so go around there for an hour or two for a walk in the morning mm -hmm. then come back and I felt really energized but not being able to just get up and get out I know you can walk to the beach but I don't know something was that stop but now I have to get up to check on my plants <laughs> and to water them and it sounds crazy I'm like who is this person but it really has made a difference and we started just by growing a few herbs and seeing them on the windowsill and then going actually what can we do next and now obviously it's much bigger but it it's really helped us with lockdown to have that kind of project and have a sense of purpose as long as, as and, and it's also our work but we've made it part of our life as well which feels quite special yeah i think it's 
it is that sense of a purpose and motivation and, and a reason to do something. I think that's, I'm sure that a lot of people watching this will have struggled with things that perhaps they normally found quite easy or, you know, they found themselves able to get up in the morning and tackle the day. And, you know, a lot of those wouldn't have necessarily gone through anything near what you guys have gone through. And it is really, really tough to, like you say, get dressed and think, right, what am I going to do today? And I, I love that the plants and what you're growing give you that. And it, it goes to show as well. I mean, how, how big is your garden? What are we talking here, like size? If Duncan opens the window, I can show you. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I want to talk about as well with people listening who might be thinking, you know, I live in a flat or I've got a tiny garden. They might be thinking that when you say small, they're like, oh no, mine's really small and I can't grow things. And I think it's really, really insightful to start thinking about like what other people can do and how they can apply this themselves and how they can grow things themselves. You know, I am, I am not green fingered at all. So I'm thinking about what can I, what can I go and grow? So I used to kill things all the time but now <laughs> i always do <laughs> with one, but we just started with growing one herb that's it let me duncan's going to show you out the window can you stab can you see that uh i don't know why i'm tilting my head <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i can see it oh okay yeah it is quite small oh, isn't it yeah yeah um but yeah we've got we've got uh herbs growing on one side and tomatoes down the middle i've just planted the beans on the on the left you can side. tilt it a bit more forward duncan like that yeah that's better that's better i can start to see some layers of black compost and things there you go yeah so we've got paths in between and then there's it's basically the size of a normal allotment i think yeah cool um, and there's a gonna be enough hopefully food for us to so we don't have to buy fruit and veg very much wow that would be amazing it feels like it because what we also what we did was because when you're starting to think what you're going to plant you can feel really overwhelmed with that mm -hmm. of like what what do i actually do so we start we wrote down because people are like oh you should plant this and you should plant that and i'm not very good sometimes at listening to others and i was thinking but what do i actually eat i don't want to plant lots of carrots i don't like carrots very much <laughs> i can so, see the thought process behind that then <laughs> why am i going to grow loads of carrots i don't even like that's ridiculous yeah. Um, so we really sat down and thought about what do we enjoy eating and then I had to remember we had a small person what does she enjoy eating she yeah. loves, peas. She loves peas and strawberries and currants but and we did and we've done it really slowly we didn't do it all at once and I think that's one of the things I've noticed on lockdown sometimes when you're like scrolling through Facebook you see these amazing things that people have done so like amazing house makeovers or um, they've made all this amazing food and you think oh I'd love to do that but I don't have time or I don't know how to do it and then you can feel a bit rubbish about yourself Does that, yeah. and that's how I'm um, definitely yeah that's what it makes you feel like if you're that you're lazy or that it makes you feel guilty that like oh that person's just learned a new language like I'm I'm just getting dressed <laughs> I know <laughs> and it's allowing yourself I think to take some of that time but also for me seeing some like, because we've grown things that grow quite quickly so some of the microgreens you yep. can actually see the process really what, what, are, what are microgreens so like rocket the salad oh, okay. that can be grown within like two weeks and oh, grow i love rocket mm. and so radish you, just, you get just the small fresh leaves and as you pick them new ones just grow back wow so if you're doing enough, enough little varieties you've got a salad just per permanently growing that's need amazing. To a bit like cress. You remember we did, used to cress heads as a yeah. kid, how quickly that springs up. Yeah, that, oh, I remember. It's that, that would be a microgreen as well. And then you get, but it's just, I think also sometimes when we're doing things, we want instant gratification from them to see. I see it all the time, like in marketing, people are like, oh, I've done that once or twice and I haven't got any. Yeah. Why are all these customers knocking down my door? What have I done wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you've done nothing wrong you just have to keep at it a bit mm. like a gym membership you know and things but it's hard it's that behavior change in your brain isn't it to make um and that's why people keep saying about lockdown they're like oh it's so great because i have all these behaviors and i thought like, well, it needs to go on for a little bit longer <laughs> so that those behavior changes actually stay in place because if it's too quick not that i'd want it to go on for longer but if it's too quick those behavior changes won't happen because people will go back to daily life 
um, really quickly. And there's so much lovely things that we can take and learn from it. I know we've been doing other things. There's a lot more family quizzes. Yes, um, have we? <laughs> yeah, like sometimes I'm like, why am I on this quiz again? But we've taken it in turns to do it differently. So one of them lasted two and a half hours. I think we all wanted to jump out the window. Oh, and then, as are always, a good couple of hours. Honestly, I've, I've never known so much trivia. I feel so so full. I should go on like a TV game show or something because at the moment I'm up there with my knowledge. <laughs> Everyone's going to be on the chase after this. <laughs> but but it's, good. Really it's nice. good though. It's good because, you know, it, what we're enjoying is we do, um, obviously, the Zoom call family quiz. And normally, because my mum lives on a narrow boat up in Bishop Stortford, um, my brother's in South End, I'm sort of out in the sticks near Chelmsford, and we're all sort of scattered about. And then you've got Pete's family as well. And we're all dotted around and everyone's got different lifestyles. And, you know, it's hard to get everyone together. But now every single week, yes, it's virtually, but we're all laughing and chatting and glass of wine. But, you know, we're getting together and I love that. And we've said, you know, we're going to keep doing it because we can't always necessarily get together and we don't. And I think that's one of the positives I'm definitely going to take from this is the, the quality of those connections and getting together. And I, I just I just think as much as we can draw from it, then the better the experience is going to be when we come out the other side. Um, which is why I love, I love what you're taking from it and how you're going through the process, you're grieving, but you're, you're focusing what you can do to be positive, be optimistic, how you can grow things, how you can grow your business. You know, it's, I think it's such an important message to anyone watching to just start to be thinking about what they can do and how they can implement it. Um, I did just talk about growing your business. So, I mean, talk about the what you've been working on particularly during this time and um, sort of keep motivated and how you sort of grown it further we've done three different things because we used to do supper clubs so obviously we'd pop up and we work mainly with mental health gardens actually around the oh, uk wow. and we give them 20 percent of all of our ticket sales mm -hmm. and there's a lovely one in faversham abbey physics garden which i called it the psychic garden for ages um which <laughs> is just so beautiful and the you feel amazing it's like a secret garden when you walk in that's all walled wow and, oh, i just i just feel so uplifted when mm. i go in there it's such a pleasure to work there yeah well. and like just because we we tend to pop up because it's seasonal so mm -hmm. there's not much not much food around in winter so we tend to pop up in late spring to um autumn and so having it outdoors in a physical it's called the physic garden and it's a you know good mental well-being garden um, so we use a lot of the stuff that they grow there as well, um, from herbs, vegetables and things like that. So that's really nice. Um, but that doesn't, it wasn't really answering your question, was it? Your but question I, was, was a bit... no, but I was leading into what we've changed to doing is doing virtual supper clubs. So we wanted to create that same excitement that you feel when you walk into the garden, but at your front door. So we've done it so they get their starters in a hamper. And you, it's all wrapped up like with string and we're used working with local producers so we're really showcasing their goods and you open it and you're not quite sure what you're going to get and Duncan makes like little bottles of the wild garlic oil that you pour onto your fresh bread wow that to make it feel you're making really me hungry <laughs> yeah, that's a good and then we have our balls as our main course and then like for dessert this week I'm so excited we wanted to bring that nostalgia and that excitement back because it's VE day and people yeah. are out and doing things, but in a very different way. We want people to feel excited during lockdown. So Duncan's making a jam roly poly um, that you'd have like, but he's doing a, I keep saying elderflower, but I don't know. Earl Grey. Earl Grey custard with it. And Amazing. then custard cream crumb on top. So people are going to get the crumb and put it on themselves. So it's wow. that childhood you know ex excitement so we really tried to bring that and people really look forward to it and that makes us feel good and then we've also been doing a lot more um online we've always been an online business so duncan does the sunday brunch club every sunday where we get people like pimp up things, things you can actually do implement at home you don't need ten thousand things in your store cupboard um to be able to do it because that always puts me off it's half past ten on the sunday yeah and then we um, and this week we've been building a VE picnic. So each day we've given you a different picnic item to make. What was day one? Day one was custard cream. Custard creams. Custard. Um, a pimped up um, cucumber good. sandwich. Yeah, we did it with gin. With gin. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Gin I like. 
Um, what else have we done? Are we going tomorrow? Today's asparagus to, pesto. Yeah, today's asparagus pesto, and then tomorrow we're doing a cook along live. Yeah. Which is me making um, Scotch eggs. Scotch eggs. Scotch eggs. But rather than needing sausage meat, you could just use sausages that you've got, which obviously is sausage meat, in your cupboard. So again, it's trying to make things, because I see all these amazing things online, like for art. But, and I'm like, where have they got all the materials from? Yeah. Oh, I don't have this much crepe paper or that. I don't have glue. <laughs> I, don't, I really want to take part, but I want to build a rocket, but I don't have all this stuff. So we've tried to think, if people are like us and don't, <laughs> don't have everything, how can we make it really simple? So every, no, something's got more than four or five ingredients in it, yeah. and we've been really focused. Um, yeah, so all you really need is eggs, sausage meat, and breadcrumbs. Yeah, to make it. Herbs and, and spices, if you want them. Yeah, I'm using a pork and marmalade sausage. Wow, so, that sounds sweet. amazing. But so that's, is, are they like challenges that people sort of cook along with you? Yeah, people cook along with each day we've given a recipe that people can do and then on the third on this thursday we're doing a big cook along so people can cook along with us we've done them before before lockdown but we've definitely learned because the first one we did we thought it would be half an hour and people were cooking along with their children it took us four and a half hours because people are saying how do i sweat an onion Doug's like, and you're like oh till it's translucent what does that mean and you know all of a yeah. sudden you're, you're real you're learning about how to do it. So I think, yeah, we've learned how to do things much quicker. The Sunday brunch clubs have really helped us mm. to kind of hone in on that and do it. And there's just so many people online at the moment. Um, we've even done it. Do you know what we did as well, which is amazing. We, this was for us, I have to be honest, to get us to do it. We wanted to watch the National Theatre live right. um, on the night because it created a bit of urgency and they had one man, two governors with James Corden, who I don't always love, but in that was amazing. And we wanted to make sure we watched it at seven. So we created a cocktail hour in our group and we showed people how to make the syrups the day before. And then Duncan made the cocktails in the cocktail hour. And we both got dressed up. The Dancy got dressed up as if we were oh going. Oh my God, to... that's amazing. And we did it. But I have to admit, if we hadn't put it out there, we might not have done it on our own. We'd be like, oh, we'll just, and it wouldn't have felt the same. And now every week since we've got dressed up, Put some makeup on. I haven't. I was going to say, like, <laughs> Philippi or. <laughs> but we've watched the National Theatre, like, or sometimes we've changed it up. So we've watched a musical, or we've even let Dancy watch a Disney. But and so we've taken it in turns. But that Thursday at seven, we've always tried to get dressed and watch something and have a cocktail hour. Dancy obviously has had a mocktail hour, so she still gets to make creations. Yeah. But it just feels really special. And um, making that family time, and we don't do any Zoom or any anything with the outside world then, because I also feel a bit overwhelmed because everyone wants to chat to you um, and have a phone call, and it's still only so many hours in the day. But I mm. think people expect you to be sat at home, just sitting there waiting. Mm. <laughs> and it's about balance, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? It's about I think um, having a routine and having finding a new routine in lockdown mm -hmm. that, that suits you know lifestyle or whatever. But, um, and having, I think, by doing things like, because we do our Sunday brunch club every Sunday at 10.30, we do our um, cocktail hour on a Thursday, we do various different things at set times, and everything else is kind of um, fluid, but because you've got those kind of pillars, you have to kind of work around them. Mm -hmm. That really helps. Um, so, like, you know, I know that for cocktail hour on a Thursday, I need to have made a few different syrups before yeah. I because um, we because it, it's part of the preserving challenge as well so making syrup and making water and then they all kind of that makes any sense mm -hmm. no? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah it's just been good for us having certain things on certain days that we do at a certain time i guess like the joe wicks at 9 a.m yeah. coaching the nation it's got everyone up at nine they know that's what they're doing at nine o'clock and it's given you something to hang the rest of your day off on that's yeah. what I've really had to um, redo. But what I love about what you're doing is, yes, it's for your mental health and wellbeing completely. It's helping you, but you're also helping tons of other people in this process because you're giving them something to look forward to. You're giving them some, some form of structure that on Sunday, we, you know, we've got the brunch club, they've got things that they can, you know, use to, like you say, pivot around their day and they're learning something new and people look back on their lockdown of like I learned how to cook this I learned what translucent means you know <laughs> they'll be reflecting back on what they took away from it and you're giving that and 
giving back is such a great thing for our mental health world and well-being and i just think the fact that you're doing that and you've got this collective around you of people that are looking to you for ideas and inspiration is really really good and plus it the whole thing about people feeling isolated right now by creating this collective who are obviously really passionate and interested in what you're doing and, and how they can do it you know it means they don't feel so on their own because they're part of something and whether your people have lost their jobs whether they're furloughed whether they're you know just not working as much as there's so much uncertainty and, and fear right now and people feeling a bit lost so you've given them something to feel part of as well as learn as well as eat better you know there, there's so many positives to it but i'm glad you said about boundaries around it as well though because you can't be on all the time and you know you, you run this growing online business and there's all these people going oh what should i cook today and i've grown this and you can't always be there to answer this stuff you have to have the time and protect fiercely the time just for you guys and your daughter just to have some downtime and just have some quiet time and yeah i think i think it's amazing the fact that you're you're implementing that because a lot of people aren't necessarily as aware of how best to manage those boundaries and get that balance um so i think it's brilliant i love it I think because i work sometimes i work in the charity sector and for startups and you can be expected to work all the hours duncan went skiing once and came back and he said imogen you haven't actually moved from the corner of the sofa <laughs> And he thought there's a box of pizza. Have you just yeah. had like two squares? It's crazy. Yeah, I was like, I've been so busy. He's like, Imogen, that's not healthy and it's not okay. You yeah. need to leave that job or get them to change what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of, and you were like, oh, it was a bit of a shock for someone to tell me, but that's why we've been really, the whole reason we've set up our business is because we want to be able to have 14 weeks off a year, which is pretty much the school holiday that Zancy and maybe other children that we have will have so that we can spend that time as a family that's our number one goal and that's what we've always been striving towards to protect that um yeah because for our mental health we just know how important it is we want to make that the core of what we do while we're helping others because i have to say also what i've had to train myself not to do is when i wake up in the morning is not to look at my phone first thing is to look at my plants <laughs> because oh i, I love that <laughs> I've had to replace it though. It's that weird because otherwise I yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah. You do. And I go, oh, I'll just answer that, that, that. And all of a sudden, two hours have gone. You're like, mm. that's not healthy that I'm still sitting in my bed with my cup of tea Duncan brought me and going through my phone. I could have got up, gone downstairs, looked at my lovely plant, had a cup of tea, and then sat in the garden and answered some of those questions mm. after I've had that kind of protected time to get them. And it's also more inspirational as well. Um, so, if you're, for example, if you're talking about growing peas sat in front of some peas that are growing <laughs> you're going to be thinking about them rather than if you're in a dark room on your third cup of tea yeah it, not, it doesn't really you know, get you thinking about what you're doing no i'm not excited about what you're doing either and i think mm. the problem is when we get stuck in the habit of the minute we wake up picking up these devices we're constant we're setting a time for the rest of the day of being reactive rather than proactive because you're reacting to messages people have sent you emails posts other people's communication you're not thinking about what you're doing and the purpose behind that you're constantly reacting and like you say everyone's got their own loop they get stuck into and before you know it hours have gone by and you know you might go facebook emails whatsapp linkedin and back again facebook and you keep going through and you get drawn into replying to stuff and it's just a, a bit of a vacuum isn't it of of concentration of time of energy and it's just not healthy like you say we, oh, sorry. we don't have a whiteboard we have got um some a3 paper downstairs that we put our post-it notes on it mm -hmm. but what i've started doing during lockdown is writing on the mirror <laughs> probably in the like just my five things that i want to do that day and yeah. one of them might be like play the dance or that should always be up you know but a, a particular thing um and then something i want to do for, but i just write it up there in lipstick which feels it's a lipstick i don't like <laughs> and, um, <laughs> But it, it's I waste it. it. Use it as a pen. Yeah, I see it, <laughs> and it makes no. Fancy though, that's a bit of a. But it just makes me think. Oh, I can see it really easily. What it is to do with, and I don't know why I prefer it on the mirror than a piece of paper. Probably because I have a toddler, so she'll like hide it, give it to the dog. God knows. But it just bury it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's been buried everything. But to get to see what's written on the mirror and go, okay, that's what I'm doing. Today, I know some people like write a mantra, but for me, it's knowing, okay, these are the five things. And, I, and it makes me, it just makes my day feel easy. I think yeah. that's one of the things. Sorry, you were going to... I was going to talk about mobile phones just briefly. Like, 
So I, my new technique is to um, allow my phone battery to run out at night and then not charge it up overnight. So in the morning, I have to put it on charge and it's therefore stuck in a place. So That's a great it, hack. That's a great idea. Yeah. But, you know, then I, if I need it, it's there, I can use it. But I've got other things to get on with. I have to go away from it. And then yeah. for the first hour of the day, it's charging. And then, you know, that should last most of the day, so it's fine. Yeah, so you haven't got a choice of just grabbing it or picking it up because it's mm. stuck, plugged into a wall somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I think it is about just creating these, yeah, it's just boundaries around the way that you interact with these devices. Because let's face it, they're brilliant. You know, te technology, mobiles, it gives us the freedom to do so much that we couldn't do in the past. But it's it's about making sure that we're managing it and we're being smart in the way that we're working with them. And yeah. I don't know how we would survive the lockdown without them, but it's about... Yeah, because I, I, I don't know what they've done. Before. Spanish flu, they wrote letters to each other. <laughs> Some of the real greats. Wow. But, uh, it, yeah, it, it, they're amazing tools, but they are tools. They're not, mm. we are in control of them, they shouldn't be in control of us. Yeah, they say, don't they, that it's ironic they're called cell phones because people, so many people feel like trapped within them and <laughs> tethered to them almost. And yeah, it is all about just being a bit more savvy with the way that we're, we're using them. I mean, the, one of the biggest spike in online training sessions I've received recently is how to switch off because people are working from home. They're working around the clock. They're communicating with their friends and family via tech and they're constantly switched on. And, you know, it's a wonder that people's sleep is suffering, for example, you know, and teaching people that how to actively switch off and do things like you just said about Duncan it is, is so important right now it really really is you know we need to be using them like you say as tools in an effective way rather than letting them just take control over us because it just gets too overwhelming doesn't it I've got to ask Imogen have you got a name for your plants no do you I talk to them I do talk to them, but they're <laughs> plant, planty, plant one. They've never, it's that thing, they say some people name their cars and some don't. Yeah. And my mum would always name all of her cars and my dad and I just didn't really get it. So that, but, and so, but with my plants, yeah, that's, we've got, we've got planty, planty one. <laughs> plant, that plant's a bit sad, needs a bit more water. <laughs> that's been a, but I do like sit there and I get, one of our kiwi plants isn't it, very happy today and I was quite, felt quite bereft. I was like, how am I going to fix my kiwi plant? Duncan, quick, how are we going to do it? going to save it! <laughs> Looking at it. But what's really nice about my um, uncle, he's 84 and lives in London and he, it's amazing, he's got no, uh, he's got a phone, so he's got, he's got no TV. He's got, he calls it the internet. He doesn't have, um, he doesn't have any connection for one of my friends is dropping food around every couple of days actually which is really nice um to him but he doesn't have any of the normal modern technology but what i do love is i'm phoning him every day on lockdown because he's on his own and it's on just a normal phone where you can't see each other which was very old-fashioned and he asked me every day how are your plants and we go through what that but he used to be a farmer so actually but i'm like oh it looks a bit sad he's like don't worry it's just a bit like us it just needs a bit of watering a bit of love and it will come back to life don't what people do is they write it off too quickly and then think it's lost hope but actually if you just spend time with it you can bring it back and it just it kind of fits with how i feel about lockdown a little bit but it's so nice to have that shared interest with him mm -hmm. And actually, I quite like not being able to show it to him on the phone going, or what, because I have to work it out and use my brain a little bit. Yeah. And I love having that daily connection with him. And he'll be like asking me, he'll be like, oh, I need to water at this time because of the weather. But it just feels really, really nice. And I get, also get a lot of stories from him about Ireland and about how when he used to farm and how they did it and the traditional ways which are coming back. But it's a, yeah. love, it's a real connection, I think, through the family and what they used to grow and my other uncle told me that my grandpa grew gooseberries and I never met my grandpa but we planted some gooseberries in the garden and that every day when I see them I always kind of like do a cheer uh, and that's amazing my and that feels I don't know it just feels so I never thought I'd be someone that felt like that about things but I really do that's amazing yeah. I love the way the analogy that the way that you talked about um that plants are like us they just need a bit of love, a bit of water now and again, um, and to be treated right and not to be abandoned because they're having a bad day, um, but equally not be overwhelmed with like, you know, and suppressed or things being too much, you know, I just, yeah, I think that's a great, great analogy. What's Spartacus up to? 
Sorry. He's just barking at Sorry, okay, as you were saying, it's right. Right. yeah, he's barking at, I don't know what he's barking at. Probably, probably nothing if it's anything like my dog. <laughs> um, so talk to me about the revolution. The revolution. Right, so um, the revolution, the foodie revolution, it's a, uh, you do it because you're better. <laughs> I'm trying to the food is always interesting when you work together as a couple, that balance, because one of you tends yeah. to talk. But the foodie revolution is something we're really excited about and we want it to, to focus on traceability, so knowing where your food comes from. We want it to focus on sustainability, how is food sustainable. We want it to focus on um, seasonality, so knowing what's in season. Because when we started our business, we used to ask them, oh, can we have this, this and this? Whereas now when we go to the farms, I go, what have you got? Yeah. And we create the menu that way around to be much, so much more in tune. But also really key is affordability because everyone thinks it's going to cost a lot more to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So there are kind of four core values. And then in the foodie revolution, we're looking at it split into four pillars. So we're looking at what you plant. So that could be yourself, like us planting it, or what other people plant. We're speaking to someone about um, tea in um, Sri Lanka, and they're coming on to do a live. And they're actually talking about how the people have been affected by the coronavirus. And they work with plantations where the workers are treated right. But one of the biggest things is a lot of the workers haven't had access to soap, which is a massive thing in coronavirus, just being able to wash your hands and to help that spread. Um, and the plantations they work with all have access to soap, which it, you don't think about that when you have your tea in the morning, do you? That's mad. And it's, so that's really key for us, how things are planted both for us and with other people, how we pick them, whether you're picking them yourself or how you pick the butcher you use. Is it known as the tail butcher? Is, is it a factory butcher? But thinking about how you do those things, then um, how to preserve things, the things coming in season. I don't know if you wild garlic seems to have gone mad this year it's one of the it's best long years season this year. long season but also people are at home so they're looking to try and start foraging and start learning how to do things and it's about helping people preserve it the whole year because it'll just go and then disappear mm -hmm. so have um teaching different skill points and then all the rest of the so what recipes are you going to cook how are you going to make it look nice but we know all of that information, even as I've just said it, is overwhelming. So we, we, it's really overwhelming. You're like, oh God, where do I start? So with the Foodie Revolution, we really wanted to bring people together and just set one challenge a week. Mm -hmm. So our first challenge was to plant a herb plant. And we gave some options and everyone planted herb plants. The next week it was to plant microgreens. Which was, and someone just came to my door now actually to get their microgreens. I've left them outside for them because we found actually getting seeds has been really hard in lockdown. Oh, okay. I had to you, I had to get up, not get up, you know, be awake and on the computer for me at seven o'clock in the morning to join a queue to buy seeds mm. and the seed queue shut at 9am online. It was like buying tickets for Glastonbury. Oh my God. It was crazy. But then all of these seeds arrived and actually one of the local farmers said that he couldn't get seeds from there. And I was like, I've got them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe you should have them. <laughs> he was laughing. Um, and then this week we're getting people to preserve an oil. So if they've never preserved something before, just making like a rosemary oil or something from the herbs wow. either that they've grown in the last month. But it feels like a big mission and then what's key to us is having those milestones so people can see how far they've come. So by Christmas we're saying people have 34 different things that they've preserved, whether that's like a jam which will come later or whether it's um, your vinegar oils and then you can use those to make hampers for your friends or eat them all like I will. <laughs> and um, pick them up. But We've put a shelf up so we can see the progress and then we're showing the progress in the garden. And as we teach people how to plate and make things look prettier as well, they'll learn something each week. But we're never going to do more than 60 minutes of teaching within that group. So we give people time. 60 minutes a week. 60 minutes a week. Yeah, not in total. That would be, that would be crazy. But 60 minutes a, a week so that people really can look at the lessons and then go away and action it mm -hmm. and feel excited about it. And also we're there to talk to people, obviously, within our set time so yeah. that we have to I have had people have messaged me and that I've, they've said it themselves they're like oh I didn't expect you to answer at 2am but sometimes we think we should when people message at 2am oh I must answer now you know it's that but um it just feels really excited and everyone's been putting up pictures of what they've planted and I get so excited I'm like look Duncan look and Duncan claps 
she's now yeah. like claps because she's like yay I don't know why, but yeah, I'm yeah, happy. I'm, I'm applauding, yeah. Yeah, I just put my phone this morning saying they were going to get their tomato plants this morning and was there any questions they need to ask? And just for us, that really feels like we're all in it together, that sense yeah. of community. And then making the preserves, I think having that real life thing that you can make and it's tangible. <laughs> and if you're making a salad, you can just put a tiny bit in and think, I've made that myself. I'm domestic goddess. Um, <laughs> And seeing that grow by Christmas, you can really see what you've achieved. Mm -hmm. And that feels a bit, I keep saying it's a bit like when you have a baby, like you get the milestones, like, oh, they, I'm really rubbish at holding them up and putting them next to them. But it's that, oh, they've walked or they've smiled or they've, you know, whatever, you get these cards that you put with them. And it kind of feels like that, but in your own, and keeping that up after lockdown because a lot more people have been baking bread we know that because it's gone mad um but actually when life goes back to normal we want will you stop being able to do that and you won't be able to do as much as you do on lockdown because you'll be commuting you'll some people have a bit more time because yeah. children will be at school will be yeah and we don't know what the world will look like but as m no one really quite knows yet but we want that's why we're calling it our foodie revolution because we want to revolutionise the way that people look at food and feel much more connected to where it's come from because there yeah. is a massive disconnect at the moment like we waste so much and I think thing, as well though so go on Dan, go on I was just <laughs> going to say that the other thing was that um, especially like uh, when lockdown was happening and they were talking about like um, in Venice the fish were going back to the um, canals yeah and kind of stuff um, it feels like we've been given another chance and one of the biggest problems we've got with the environment is industrialised farming, both meat and vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can address that now, we've got this chance to really look at it and see the, the supply chain and how it's done, shortening that supply chain um, and fewer um, air, air food miles, um, all that kind of stuff. I think it's really important at the moment to to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the chance that we've got. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, there's been so many examples, isn't there, about how the Earth's healing without there being so many humans about polluting it. And like you say, it's a fantastic opportunity for people to learn more about the part that they play in mm -hmm. the wider process. Because I think a lot of the time people feel a bit powerless and people are aware that the, the planet is struggling and, you know, there are all these different problems, but they're a bit like, well, I don't, I don't know what I can do about that. You know, you know, I can't afford to buy organic and, you know, people are a bit limited in their vision of how they can really make a small difference. So teaching them about that and the way that you're teaching it, I think is really, really good because you're not overwhelming them with all this information about suddenly everyone's expected to have a massive allotment and grow everything and be self-sustainable, but it's drip feeding people and that helps build their confidence because psychologically it's like, okay, I've, I've progressed, I've progressed, I've progressed and it moves them forward, but in a way that is, you know, they've got short-term goals to focus on because if you give them too much, it'll be like, there's no way I can do that, you know, and they'll, they'll disengage. So the way that you're approaching it is going to keep them learning keep them growing ah, see what i did there um, <laughs> um so yeah i think it's i think it's brilliant i think it's really really good so um i'm going to start to draw, draw it to a close but what i would like to do is i'd like you to explain how people can get involved because i'm sure there's people watching going i want to make my own oil i want to make chutneys uh, you know what can they do how can they get involved with everything you're doing they, do. they come along and follow us on a facebook page which is um www.facebook.com slash bangers and balls and um, you can send us a DM on there as well and um, ask to join the foodie revolution we open it for certain periods throughout the year and we're opening it in the next <laughs> week so be able to join just because we want people to come in at the same time so we yeah. have that real energy and begin their journey together and just also to know that no one is perfect like we're definitely not this is not about being perfect i get milk i can't work out how to get that from a non-industrial place yet and i love it so it's about looking and reflecting and just giving that time to have thought but yeah it's a really lovely group and it's really friendly duncan's in there as the head chef mm. and um there to answer anything i don't 
I bring in a lot of the different experts into the group. So we work with an organic farmer, Jack, and he tells you what is worth growing organically and what isn't. And he's very direct <laughs> in, a, in a really fun way. And um, we've got um, a baker who has the Canterbury Baking School. She's amazing. She trains with a Michelin chef, um, Italian Michelin chef in Germany, and she's teaching us all about grains. And that's going to be something that we look at later in the year because we tend to use the same grains. We've got some really exciting people coming in wow. um, to talk to us and we're going to do something where we all meet up offline as well because we want to um, use some of the money to, to buy woodland. Um, and that's how we want to remember our little girl B is by creating this woodland where the bees can be. Oh, wow. That's what, that's what our long term goal is, is to, to buy woodland and leave it to be free. And then as the 3D revolutions, we can meet there and uh, share our oils. I don't know, mm -hmm. you drink, but we'll do something really fun on there and we're working out together what that will look like. Um, so yeah, it's a really good thing to be part of, but yeah. That sounds so exciting. I, I love, I love your energy and yeah, I love your mission and everything you're doing. And I, I just find you guys so inspiring. I really, really do. I'm feeling a bit emotional. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining me and chatting today. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I think loads and loads of people take a lot from this. Um, not just about food and growing food and growing micro greens. I've learned something <laughs> new. Um, but generally getting inspiration, drawing inspiration from what you guys have gone through and how you're coping and how you're dealing with lockdown and how you're giving yourself purpose and how you're helping others as well. Um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so good. Really yeah, lovely. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.